So, Ali, you know, beginning to look at the um, design of instruments, you have to start historically and understand that rotary instruments really were designed based on the hand instruments that had been used prior to the development of the rotary concepts. So the very first instruments that were introduced all used a similar design to a hand instrument. They simply put a handle on it and put it into a mechanized movement. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about this concept of a landed versus non-landed instruments, sure. rotary instruments, because that sets the framework for really the development of the current uh, level of, uh, of, of understanding. Yeah, that what makes it, you know, that's one big delineation between the different systems, whether the files that are present have lands or no lands. And what lands are, are originally NITI files were um, uh, ground, and they found out that when you put a reamer design in a canal without any centering mechanism, you'll end up getting transportation. And these files, because they have shape memory, they want to store it down in the root canal. So uh, they found that they, if put lands on the files, it helps in keeping the file centered in the canal and reduce the uh, odds of transportation. Of course, that came at a huge cost. And the cost was that you ended up having flat surfaces uh, basically do the cutting for you, right. uh, which created very dull files. Not efficient. And not efficient at all. And you, it required a tremendous amount of torque to right. operate these files. Um, so that was the problem. And it was not really until later where uh, uh, different systems came on and they decided that they're going to get rid of the land. The problem ended up then happening, the same thing that was predicted, mm -hmm. you ended up getting transportation with those non-landed files until a specific uh, patent process came around that helped to get around the problem of uh, you know, losing the lands and, uh, and allowed us to have both the efficiency of having no lands Hence and the have center. the benefit of having a, a, cent a, a centering mechanism, um, such as the alternating contact point system, in order to have uh, that kind of an advantage. The other thing, Dennis, that I think is important to realize is that because of these problems with files and the, the over-engagement that would have resulted into uh, too much torque on a given file, the systems that were available originally uh, on the market had to create a variable shape because they needed to have different tapered mechanisms, different tapered files uh, of variable tapers uh, create a shape in the canal that would obviously end up at the end of the day to be a non-standardized uh, variable shape. So you ended up getting a shape that had to be customized with your fill. And it was fine, it still did the job of creating a shape, but it was far more difficult to obturate. Constant tapered preparations are a lot easier to obturate, and that really is the key with constant preparation. The problem, again, with constant preparation has always been getting a locking uh, problem inside the tooth. And so, again, the question has been, how can we design files that could get around the problem of increased torque by, landed, uh, by putting lands on the files, as well as having to create uh, these types of variable shapes. And uh, that, again, becomes a part of the design feature of specific files so that allow you to do that. Let me see if I understand this correctly. <clears throat> if you can have a continuous taper on an instrument mm -hmm. for each and every instrument that you are introducing into the root canal, yeah. the chances are that unless there is some particular disengagement uh, design, mm -hmm. you will ultimately create more and more engagement with each subsequent instrument that moves into the root canal. Yes, that's the crown down effect. You're absolutely right. right. <clears throat> if you have a mechanism in association with that constant tapered instrument such that it relieves it mm -hmm. as an alternate contact point, um, which is on the instruments that we're going to talk about, that allows for the disengagement and the safety of the yes. instrument in the yes. use of the instrument. Absolutely. It's okay. basically getting the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. okay. This way you end up having a sharp, non-landed uh, cutting file, not get the transportation that is the normal byproduct of these non-landed uh, files, get the benefit of creating a constant preparation that is easier to obturate. Okay. And that sums up this whole concept of maximizing the design elements in order to get what we want out of a file. Okay. So that's really the, the, the key part of um, um, design features. Well, I have a question for you. Uh, why not just use hand instruments? 
Well, that's certainly an option. People can use hand instruments. The problem is that hand instruments, as was proven in the first you know, 30, 40 years of endodontic uh, therapy um, as a profession, it's very difficult to, and it's you know, very technique sensitive. Uh, stainless steel doesn't bend, so it's very easy to cause procedural errors such as ledging, transportation, and all kinds of different issues. Um, they're not efficient. So there basically, uh, there's a huge lack of efficiency with, with hand files, uh, the, a lack of flexibility. So as soon as the curvature of a root goes beyond a certain uh, degree, then your stainless steel hand files are too stiff to get around that kind of a curvature. Uh, is stainless steel stronger? Yes, it absolutely is compelled to nitai. Nitai is more flexible, however. So which is why I believe the combination of using stainless steel hand files at the beginning to get a canal to a specific small size, and then using your nitis to enlarge that space is the best way to go where you maximize safety mm -hmm. and efficiency at the same time. Again, it goes back to what we were talking about, getting that proper balance and equilibrium. And um, so I have a saying, I say, Dennis, that stainless steel is for gaining length, nitai is for widening that length. Mm -hmm. So you always want to proceed in a canal with a stainless steel to gain the length and then enlarge it with a nitai efficiently and a rotary instrument would be the best way to do that. So that's basically combining uh, the best of both worlds. And it creates less errors when you do it that way. And uh, the whole theme becomes creating a channel with your stainless steel file. Now you have a patent space you know, that is the canal. Use your nitai rotary file in a specific motion, which we're going to talk about, called single stroke and uh, clean. And uh, then you can end up getting the benefits of reproducible shapes using nitai files that are quick and very efficient. I think that's a, a, a clear advantage of, of rotary instruments is that you can create reproducible shapes. That's the when key. you're using a hand instrument, every person is going to use that instrument different, yeah. differently. Sure. And the shape ultimately is going to be different. And that yeah. makes obturation that much more difficult. Yeah. So this is all leading into this triad that you talked about. Yeah. Having a procedural process that actually allows us to get the balance that we yeah. want between all the parts. Yeah, it used to be that root canal fillings of the x-rays were like fingerprints. You know, you could yes. tell whose oh, work was oh, whose. Absolutely. You know, uh, but nowadays, the, the shape is cooked into the system. So that your root canals look just like mine. It may, may hurt my feelings or yours, <laughs> right. but at the same time, it's a benefit to the patient because they can get reproducible shapes that gives them the best uh, um, uh, results. So why don't we talk about uh, uh, instrument motion and the differences between different systems on that particular factor when we come back next. Perfect.